Well, now welcome back here to the discuss on employment matter. And Nigeria carry unemployment on top of their head. If you want to look the number of countries when we say unemployment population don't increase by 33.3 percent, especially for the fourth quarter of 2020. Uh, getting also the Nicole on the employment self nine day. Uh, some people now their own work. We say make I even just wake up for money. Maybe I just come up for somewhere. Me my neighbor they know they look me like say I be NFA no future ambition. Uh, but if we look true true the work we say then they do. You better say when they sit down for inside house they count sky. To discuss this matter of course this, um, unemployment rates. I highly think they affect everybody. I get per se inside studio here with me Gloria Etim, when be data analyst and SBM intelligence person. How you day? I'm fine. Well, of course, the speaker say you join us for our show this morning, Gloria. How are you taking this unemployment uh, matter? They say we don't carry on top of our head now as number three. Here, yeah. what's that one come mean? Okay, so what this means is that, you know, um, there's unproductivity. And um, when there's unproductivity, it means that people are not using their skills. And um, with the definition of unemployment as people who are they are willing and they are able to work, but they can't find work. So what this means is that there's unproductivity, and by unproductivity, it means that um, there's a there's a there's a boarding intergenerational poverty. Hmm. So what I mean by this is that intergenerational poverty. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying a spiritual matter. Mm -mm, it's not. So if you if you could remember, people keep going back to the slave trade period. You know, they keep they keep citing that as an example and as the reason why. Um, Nigeria is where it is at the moment. So, and why do they cite that period? Because it was a, productive, a period of unproductivity, where nothing was really happening. You know, they said they took away our, our young men and women. But you see, it's the same situation that we are facing now. Our young men and women are with us, but they're not doing anything. And if you cross this situation with um, the rising cost of food um, prices, you know, um, it tells you that we are, we, are, we are in a slippery, a slippery slope. Yeah, we, are, we are in for a long thing. So if, if you see um, food prices, uh, they've, they've really risen. And um, you know, it means that people don't have, uh, people, as in people's ability to even pay for food, you understand, has reduced. Yes. So if, if, you, if, you, if you think about it this way, how do people get food? It is either you are able to cultivate the land, mm -hmm. It is either you are able to um, buy, as you have buying power, you can mm -hmm. get it. It is, or somebody gives you the food. But we've we've seen a decline in all these dimensions, you know, over the past um, over the past five years. So you you would you would see that um, people's ability to even plant the farm has been reduced because of consistent um, co conflict, you know, especially in the places where farming um, farming happens in large. Um, large, large uh, scale. Yes. And then if you, if you leave that out, you know, people's ability to buy food is out of it. You know, and, and why, am I, why am I bringing the food scenario in? Because, you know, the average Nigeria spends 56% of their income on food. You understand? So with, with the way things are now, it means that people don't even have their as in, money again for, as in to buy food. And, and if, you, if you think about it, if you go back to the NBS report, you know, um, on borrowings during the pandemic, they said 41% of Nigerians um, borrowed money to buy food. So, you know, it's, it's, and food is at the bottom of the hierarchy. Food is at the bottom, is at the list. So what this means is that we have a generation of people who, for now, would just be thinking about food. Because of, you know, we are just thinking about how, how do I... How do I even eat to live? You know, while other people are thinking about things like, um, you know, innovation, hyperloop, and all those things, we are still at the basis. Mm. We are still trying to survive. To settle you know? the stomach. Yes. Yeah, so they say ex existence precedes essence. So we are still at the existence level. Yes. We are, we are still trying to like um, make sure that we are not, um, we are not f um, like the the survival theory. We are not we are not out of the of the place. And what does like we've started seeing. What this means is that we would have a lot of people roaming the streets. Yes. You know, there have been reports of people roaming in Croatia and all those things. We we'll have even more of them and would we'll have ungoverned spaces. Yes. Even in the cities. You know, before now we talk about ungoverned spaces in, uh, in the boundaries, in the fringes, you know, where government yeah. efforts are not reached and all those things. But this, this is, is not going to be that way. 
and we've started seeing it on government spaces in the cities. Yeah. You know, because you know, when people are not productively engaged. I like that term you're just using, productively engaged. Because there are people who are engaged but not productively. Yes. So, okay. Mm -hmm. um, like, I've been following this up very well. Um, people who've been unemployed for the past, um, let me say, six months. And um, for men, what I've noticed is that for men, for, for like young men um, who lost their jobs during the pandemic, the first thing they want to do is they want to um, maybe e-hauling e you know, either as um, Uber drivers or as um, the, the, the delivery guys and all those things. And then for the women, uh, uh, sorry, for the ladies, they're just trying to um, go back, go learn a skill, a vocational trade, and all those things. And, and that takes us back to our educational system, you know. So you could see that, you know, it's, as it, that takes us back to our educational system. I, I don't feel it was planned well enough, you understand, to accommodate um, the changes that we're facing now. And that's another problem with Nigeria, reactive, reactive public policies. Mm. Reactive public policies. We wait for something to happen. And after that thing has happened, yeah, did we now rush and try to um, see how we can put things in place? Just like the in government a, now. In a chaotic manner. Yeah, just like the government are talking about how to, you know, review the educational curriculum yes. to ensure that uh, what they teach for, you know, our intellectual institutions fit the applicable and fit address Nigeria um, problem. But like, I like what you know, because we don't already they talk Latin for the past 15 years. Exactly. And, and it's the same thing we've been talking to, we've been saying to, with regards to diversification. Yes. We've been talking about it from 1973. Boom. We are still talking about it till now. Monoproduct economy and all those things. So we've, we've had several literatures, we've had several people talking about these things, mm. but real action, real action. I see the lack. Yes. And then if, if you cross that with the fact that we don't even, um, we don't even sp um, spend much money on education, about 7% of the total budget, and then you cross that with the fact that, um, you know, no evidence-based policies, you understand? So what is the basis? What's the rationale for a particular policy that, you've, that you're trying to make? You understand? Yes. Yeah, so if, if, you, if you go back, you know, these are, this, you, you literally see that they're, they're not planned out. So basically policies, when we say, um, they take into consideration the next 10, 15 years. Not be policy where we say you want to can resolve the matter when it don't happen before they go. Yes, I agree with you uh, on to that particular matter. Yes, to reverse this trend, you already mentioned one thing, of course, to ensure that they get policy misfire. Mm. So just say we get the right policy when we go address the right issue. Which other suggestion you get on mind? If you want to tackle this issue in the next, I don't say the next five years, I'm going to do, but at least we could look and say short term. What do you feel if it begin the which foundation will we begin the lay now to resolve this issue? Okay, so um, for now, what we can do is that we can start um, um, like creating buffers, mm -hmm. and um, sadly, Nigeria cannot do much of that. Mm. So, for instance, we've we've heard in countries like Japan, like the U.S., where they've been um, um, they've given them relief packages, you know, to stimulate the economy. But because of our poor state, because of the economy that we have, we cannot afford that. So what, what I think the government can do at this point is, is to leave the market. You know, there's a lot of control you know, on the market. They're trying to control these, they're trying to control that. You know, con in, um, the government interference is too much. So um, for instance, now we talk about um, just policies that have just passed, such as the border closure, which is not... Um, necessary for mm. because you know you cannot if if demand is greater than supply, obviously prices will go up. You understand, and you know these are things that you cannot control. So I feel like the government should try um, to let, let let the market you know go on its own pace. You understand, so not to control this one, control that one. You just heard the thing that happened with cryptocurrency, mm. which was which was like. Um, a buffer for some people. Yes. And then we say, oh, the government has banned cryptocurrency. So what, you remember the ban of Gokada? Mm. So we just want, government should just leave the market. You understand? You know, let, let them be at the sideline, you know, instead of trying to manipulate and yes. all those things, because all those things, yeah, um, they, they affect the way they, the productivity of the market and mm. all. Mm. Another, another, another thing the government can do in the short term is to um, create alternative programs. You know, because we've been talking about this issue of um, curriculum review for a very long time. And um, it seems like 
the, the, the very little or no improvement. Yes. So what the government can do is to create um, um, some stuff like alternative education is by the side. You know, okay, for instance, we've, we've seen um, impact in the technology industry. Yes. How, how, how has the government supported that, for instance? You know, we've not, we've not really heard about government's um, tangible support in that area. In fact, even celebrating the people who have gone out of, uh, as in, of, as in, of the system yes. to do something good. We've not, we've not really heard, you know, about their, their celebrations and all, you understand? So we, we I mean, and I, um, Apple has just bought a Nigerian app for about $1 billion. That's a mm -hmm, lot of money. Mm -hmm. So you, you could see that. So that's, that's, that's a part that the government can venture yeah. into. And not the long term, like what we cannot have, avoid is education. You know, education that is channeled at solving problems, you know. So I don't want to, I don't want to go to school and still learn about um, um, things that are cake, you know, things that, are, that I can't put to use. So, okay, if, if, if the educational system had provided food, you would, you would notice that people would not, would not have to come out and then start thinking of what else can I do with my life. That's true. You know, can I go and make hair? Can I go and, and learn like how that. to fix nails and all those I things? I mean, you, you have, if nothing else, eh, you don't already give government free consultation on to how to resolve this issue when we say we get for our country today. Thank you so much, Glory Etim, uh, data analyst and SBM intelligence person. Thank you very much Thank for you. your contribution to our show this morning.